Bezat Hashem, with Hashem's loving grace, welcome to Amunah Beams with your host, Laser Brody. Today's podcast is entitled, The Successful Shidduch. When you're looking for a prospective match for yourself or for your children, today's lesson is important food for thought. In Israel, there's an expression called rakivit. It means a train. People use it here when there's a family with a bottleneck. What does it mean? One of the older siblings can't find a shidduch. So all the other siblings have to wait in line because parents here don't like to marry off a younger child before they marry off an older child. If they do, then people start asking, what's wrong with the older child that the parents skipped over him or over her? That's exactly the problem. When parents start listening to what other people are saying rather than listening to what Hashem is saying. Sometimes Hashem simply sends a shidduch to a younger child before he sends one to an older sibling. Hashem did that when he sent the shidduch for Rachel before Leah. Well, who objected to that? Lovan. <laughs> Lovan wasn't exactly the tzaddik of the generation. True, everything turned out for the best, but not because Lovan wanted, because of Shem. Let me share one of my original parables with you. If you think the family I'm talking about is someone you know, then they're nothing more than an invention from my imagination, a coincidence. Are they similar to anyone today? Well, could be. Imagine a family in Brooklyn that has what we call in Israel or Kevit, the train, a bottleneck of the five kids backed up waiting to get married with the oldest daughter 27 years old and the youngest daughter 19 already with a boy of 25 and twin boys of 22 in between. Now, no one could understand why the daughter wasn't married. She was attractive, a special ed teacher with a wonderful profession and intelligent as well. And she and her parents had one mutual problem. They thought that anything less than the Lakewood Rosh Hashiva's son wasn't good enough for them. Well, the parents got a phone call from one of the heads of a well-known Baal Tshuva Yeshiva in Munsi. He heard about their daughter, and he told them he has a wonderful young man for them. This particular young man came from a family in Atlanta, Georgia, and he was a graduate of MIT with a master's degree in astrophysics. Yet, he left everything to immerse himself in Torah. Now, 31 years old, after a mere seven years in Torah, he had already finished all of Shas and all of Shulchan Aruch, and he earned rabbinical ordinations from several leading rabbinical authorities in Muncie and Borough Park. Not only was he a brilliant Torah scholar, but he would pray slowly and with tremendous kavana. What's more, the whole yeshiva loved him because he was so kind and thoughtful. He was always willing to help other people and do a favor for someone else, and help one of the new boys understand his learning. Well, the girl's father didn't like the fact that the boy was a Balchuvar, or that he came from Georgia. Does he at least come from a family with a good lineage, the father asked? Well, the Rosh Hashiv answered, I'll tell you the truth. The parents claim to be Jewish, but they don't have any proof. Since they belong to the Messianic community, the son did complete Gira Lechomra, complete strict Orthodox conversion during his first year at the yeshiva. With that point, the girl's father interrupted, Rosh Hashiva, if you were a Shadchan, I've already slammed the phone in your face. But since I respect Torah scholars, I'll let you speak. What do you think such a redneck yokel like your student is suitable for my daughter and our family? The father protested. Rosh Hashiva took a deep breath. Well, he already knew that the student deserved a family with much better character than this particular man's. Excuse me, sir. He said, we're not talking about a redneck yokel like you say, but we're talking about a God-fearing, ordained rabbi who's a Torah scholar of impeccable character and who will definitely be one of the giants of the next generation. Just wait and see. But I understand my mistake in calling you, and I apologize. Even though my student has potential of being another Rebbe Akiva, I agree that he's not for your daughter. And the Rosh Hashiva politely wished the father well and ended the conversation. Well, a few days later, the father received another phone call, not from a Rosh Hashiva, but from a high society shatrin who was used to being paid $7,000 from each side because he was a specialist in blue blood shiduchim that people sought after. Told the father about a 29-year-old boy that graduated from Panovich Yeshiva in Bnei Brak, and he was the great-grandson of a monumental Torah scholar whose books everyone learns, and his grandfather was one of the heads of a good Yisrael, and his father is a Rosh Hashiva in Flatbush. Well, the boy's a financial genius that learns half day and spends the other half day in investment banking. Well, the girl's father was so enthused he had never even bothered checking up on the boy. (laughs) What prestige to be married into that family. He didn't even ask why the boy was still single at 29. Well, the couple got married, but don't ask what happened afterwards. Sure, under the chuppah, they look like the couple of the year that should be on the cover of Mishpacha magazine. But a week after the Shevra they were at each other's throats, and six months later, they were divorced. 
Now, let's imagine that Hashem lets us glance at the heavenly archives to see what happened. Hashem had a perfect shidduch for this 27-year-old girl that would have succeeded if she and her family would have learned a bit of humility and brought their noses down from Mount Everest. That young Balchuva was a spark of Avram Vino's soul. He had all the wonderful qualities of our forefather Abraham, but he also had a father like Terach, and he didn't have blue blood lineage. But the girl's father turned him down, even though he was a hope diamond, because they were worried about what the neighbors would say. Well, since they turned down a spark, the great-grandson of Avram Avinu, Hashem let them hang by their own rope. Oh, you want Yechus? That's fine. You can have Yechus. So Hashem gave them a blue-blooded family that was a spark of a blue-blooded tribe. The boy they grabbed up was a spark of Dawson and Aviram from the prestigious family of Eliav in the tribe of Reuven. He subsequently buried their daughter, just like Dawson and Aviram, that brought their families that buried them with Korach's gang when they revolted against Moshe Rabbeinu. Sounds like have a pretty vivid imagination, doesn't it? Well, I guess I do. But in today's false world of Shiduchim, with these ridiculous resumes that people demand, an Avram Avinu or Rebbe Akiva wouldn't stand a chance. Neither would Leia Imenu or Rachel Imenu, because they didn't learn in Beis Yaakov, and their father, Lovan, was the head of the Syrian mafia. Now stop and think. Look who Joshua married. And he was Moses' leading student from the prestigious tribe of Ephraim. He married a hooker, Rahav the harlot. I'm not kidding, it's true. But what do you think would happen if a leading Rebbe in New York City had a son that brought home a convert from a Puerto Rican family in South Bronx that used to work in the streets? That's exactly what Joshua brought home, because her midas, her character traits, were impeccable. She was so very loyal and dedicated to her family and to Hashem once she converted. And you know who Rahab's offspring are? Listen to this lineup of all-stars. Jeremiah the prophet, Ezekiel the prophet, Huldah the prophetess, and Borch ben Neri the prophet, just to name a few. These are a few of her offspring. Now, how many people today would refuse a shidduch with King David because his great-grandmother was a convert? And how many people today would refuse a shidduch with King Solomon because his mother was a divorcee? And yet the same people jump at Shiduchim with Korach or with Dawson or Aviram because of money and lineage. Well, the people that are delayed in Shiduchim, it's usually because of one of two reasons. Either their egos get in the way or they want something for themselves that Hashem doesn't want for them. Hashem wants us to look for a good heart, for a good character, emuna, piety, and modesty. When a person looks for the wrong thing, they miss their train and the next train might not come so fast. So if your shidduch is delayed, don't blame Hashem. Assess yourself and your priorities. Ask Hashem to help you find someone who together will help you get close to Hashem. Certainly, Hashem honors such requests and He's happy to answer them, usually without delay. Keep on praying and ask for Hashem's help. Don't stop. And God willing, you'll see big salvation very soon. Amen. God bless.